Okay. Yeah. Um, so. The Vietnam War, obviously it was a very big thing at the time. But the first thing I thought of when I heard we went to, we're going to war with Vietnam was, where the fuck is Vietnam? <laughs> and who are those people? I had never heard the word Vietnam till I heard that we, 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 we were going to attack them and we're over there fighting. And uh, I kept thinking, do the government here think they're going to attack us? And then when I saw what a tiny little country it was, I went, I don't get it. Why are we at war with them? They never tried to attack us. So I'm thinking, isn't that crazy? Then I heard the reason was we were afraid of them becoming communists. I said, we were afraid of them becoming communists. And I thought, who gives a shit if they become communists? And the answer to that was, well, then everyone will follow suit. And as soon as America will be communist, and I'm thinking, America will never be communist. We don't care what the whole rest of the world does. We lead the world. We don't follow the world. So right away I said, this is some kind of idiotic war. At the same time that Vietnam reared its ugly head, rock and roll, television, draft dodging became pop popular, which caused the hippie movement, the peace movement, and of course, marijuana became more popular. I was already into it a bit, but it made it so popular that I started, there weren't that many, certainly white people weren't selling it, because we always used to have to go down to the ghetto to get it. I started selling it almost right away as soon as I started smoking it. The first thing I thought, the next morning, when I woke up and realized what an epiphany I had gone through, was there's money in this. <laughs> you know, people are going to like this. Nobody was doing it, but I knew that they would soon start. And um, the rock and roll, rock and roll was the national anthem of the youth. You know, it's what gave us the idea to break free. And this idiotic war made us want really nothing to do with the government. So rock and roll, television was becoming popular. You could see more and more things on television. And then marijuana came into it. So our whole mind became free. You know, it was all about freedom. We don't have, and Muhammad Ali, who's obviously no coward, said, I'm not going over there, and you know I'm not a coward. So I went, yeah, they kept calling draft dodgers cowards. We weren't cowards. If, if we were going to war against someone that attacked us, we would have been patriotic like they were in World War I and World War II. You go to protect your country. But I saw Vietnam as no threat at all. I had, like I said, I hadn't even heard of those people, you know. So, like everyone else, I decided, I'm not going. Now, how do I get out of it without getting in all the trouble that the draft dodgers did? And I was seeing a head shrinker at the time, regularly, and we both had the same thought. You know, let's get me out of this. And we had decided that one of the ways to get out of this was to be gay. So we decided I would, because in those days, if you were gay, you weren't allowed in the army. So what we decided to do, my head shrinker told me, you, you should, they should think you're gay, but you don't want to tell them you're gay. Because it could come back to bite you in the ass one day later in life. You don't know what you're going to be. You're 18 years old now. Uh, so we want them to think you're gay, without ever having admitted or saying you're gay, which I'm not. So he said, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to write them a letter, unsolicited, just, they didn't ask me for this letter, and I'm going to say, write it to the red board, and I'm going to say, 
I have found no signs of homosexuality in Roger. But by saying I was not gay, when they never even asked, it made them think, well, why are you, say, why are you say, saying you're not gay? Nobody asked. Then at the same time, when I filled out the, the draft form, and the last two questions were, do you use drugs, and have you ever had a homosexual experience? So what I did was, I took my pencil and I put yes, I used drugs, yes, I've had a homosexual experience. Then I erased it, but I left it so you could see that I had put it. But officially I answered no. But they looked and they said, he answered yes and then he said no, and the psychiatrist is adamant about he's not gay. Let's just give this guy what's called a one Y and it was psychologically unfit for military service. So I got out, but I wasn't gay. And that was how I got out of Vietnam.